across the ring. The counter punch. Back at y'all with another episode of my sparring stories. And you guys already know how I get down with my sparring stories. I get deep, I go in depth, and I tell you guys what you want to hear. Now, I see a lot of people out there trying to say, you know, get to the point. But you have to understand, good storytellers are detail-oriented. Good storytellers tell you everything from the beginning to the end. So be patient and enjoy this interesting sparring story. Now, let me let you guys know what happened from the beginning to the end with these guys. Errol Spence. This is when Errol Spence wasn't even really known like that. Errol Spence always been known to hardcore boxing fans. But let's be honest, you guys, for the most part, a lot of these guys are casuals. A lot of people didn't even know who the Errol Spence was. And this is me being nice saying this. It could, it could be more recent than this. But I would say the Chris Algieri fight. Because I remember when Errol Spence stopped Chris Algieri, that's when he was like, oh, you know, Pacquiao didn't do it. Then a lot of people started to look at Errol Spence like, oh, I have to watch out for this guy. Well, for all the people out there that don't know, that was around the time when he fought Chris Algieri, you know, Leonard Bundu. That was around the time when he faced Jose Benavidez Jr. For those of the people out there that don't know, once upon a time, Jose Benavidez Jr. was looked at one of those guys that could be a real problem in the sport of boxing. Same shit like his brother. Jose Benavidez Jr. was supposed to be what David Benavidez is now. Too bad he got shot in the leg, you know, kind of lost love for the sport, etc. But it's mainly the leg. That's why when Errol Smith told Terrence Crawford, man, you fought Jose Benavidez Jr., a guy with one leg. Because Errol Smith remember when he sparred Jose Benavidez Jr. And he had two legs. And Jose Benavidez Jr. was a problem at one time. I know now you guys are, are probably listening to what I'm saying and think I'm just crazy. Like, oh, it's hard to believe, right? No, at that time, this was about, what, 2015, 2016, a good seven to eight years ago, this fight took place, y'all. Now, I know some of you guys out there will say, man, who cares? We all know Errol Spence will easily beat Jose Benavides Jr. Man, use your brain. We are talking about, at this time, seven to eight years ago, before he got shot, he was like, what? He was like 21-0. Like what, 18, 17 knockout, a high KO ratio. You guys have to understand that undefeated confidence is something different, especially before all the injuries and age. And it's crazy, Jose Benavidez Jr. is what, 30 years old? He's not even old. But due to the wear and tear, being shot, all that, he's really like 35, 36. You know, some of that wear and tear, it puts some age on you. Another thing, Jose Benavidez Jr. always been known as a big trash talker. If you know, you know. Terrence Crawford was damn near losing the trash talking ability or the trash talking part of the game when it came down to Jose Benavidez Jr. And I remember they back and forth. I remember one time, this is before the Terrence Crawford fight. Before they even signed the fight, they were going back and forth. Jose Benavidez Jr. was telling them, Jr., face a fight like me, et cetera, et cetera, right? And it was funny because one, it was somebody on Terrence Crawford's team. They said this. And they said that, damn, man, he is talking shit to Crawford. Like, and keep in mind, this is, like I said, this is somebody on Bud's team saying this shit. So, back to my point, I'm just letting you guys know. That Jose Benavidez Jr. basically talked his ass into this sparring session with Errol Spence. And let me also say this. Until that point, not only Jose Benavidez Jr. was undefeated, but he was also undefeated in sparring. See, a lot of people lie to themselves and they say nobody cares about sparring. Sparring is sparring. Listen, man, I don't give a fuck about practice. 
You guys could keep using the Allen Iverson line and lie to yourself and say, practice? We're talking about practice? Man, let me tell you guys a little inside scoop. Kobe Bryant, he used to play people in basketball for money. Matt Barnes, everybody that was on you know, the Laker team that was a threat. Now, I ain't going to even say a threat because nobody could fuck with Kobe, right? But they will always try to challenge Kobe. And Kobe will, you know, take bets, you know, my 100 to your 50, shit like that. Just messing around. And I know this is a fact because I got family members that went to school with Lamar Odom and still speak to Lamar Odom to this day. And Kobe and Lamar Odom used to play one-on-one -on -one all the time for money. And don't get it twisted, you guys. Not only they play for money, but sometimes they used to just run pickup games. Because if you in there competing with the best, that's going to sharpen your toolbox. I don't give a fuck who you are. If my black ass is, is in there competing with, let's say, you know, a Tyson Fury or Alexander Usyk or a fucking Floyd Mayweather. Yes, they're way better than me, but that's still going to sharpen my tools. You get what I'm saying? So all you guys saying, oh, practice is just practice. That is bullshit. Because Kobe was in there running their ass for money and he was running their ass for free pickup games. Just straight ego on the line. And Kobe wouldn't try to get away shit. You guys can you guys can attest what I'm saying. Remember Kobe, he would record YouTube videos playing basketball with the kids and he wasn't giving them shit. That's right. I'm going to take your ass serious. I don't give a fuck if it's sparring. That's that competitive mentality. You're not trying to lose that shit. So stop trying to use that as a reason. Like, for example, and I'll tell you guys, Errol Spence whipped Floyd as a sparring. You guys say, oh, we're talking about sparring? Man, get the fuck out of here and stop trying to save your boyfriend. You know for a fact that sparring is sparring, yes. But that don't mean you're just trying to get your ass whipped because it's sparring. So, I know you guys are probably like, you know, let's get into the actual sparring. I just have to lay the facts out there first. But when it comes down to the actual sparring, and this may sound funny because usually I get real, you know, overly dramatic and deep when it comes down to the actual sparring itself. But these guys just went about six, seven rounds, and Errol Spence completely dominated Jose Benavidez Jr., y'all. When it counted. And what I mean by that is Jose Benavidez Jr. is he's a shell of himself now in a sense. He's not the same Jose he once was. You guys have to understand at this time they was talking about Jose Benavidez Jr. more than David Benavidez. They didn't even give a fuck about David Benavidez like that. You know, this was supposed to be Jose Benavidez Sr. Next biggest star. He was the one that was supposed to be facing Errol Spence. Well, he faced Terrence Crawford on the big stage. But he was supposed to be beating these guys on the big stage. Not just facing them, right? So, with that being said, because of Jose Benavidez Jr.'s big mouth, he forced Errol Spence to put it all on line on him. He was beating the living shit out of Jose Benavidez Jr. Don't get it twisted. Jose Benavidez will last some shots here and there. But I got to hearing that Jose Benavidez Jr. tried to bring up the weight issue. He, should, like, he tried to say that, you know, Errol Spence should be a fucking light heavyweight or at least at 160. He started bringing that up. He started making excuses after it and shit like that. That's why when Errol Spence told Terrence Crawford, you fought a guy with one leg. He's talking about that experience because... Jose Benavidez Jr. was using his legs a lot against Errol Spence. And he would make Errol Spence pay here and there. But from what I'm hearing, you guys, Errol Spence embarrassed that boy for six or seven rounds in that sparring session, you guys. So this is not even a long video because that's basically what happened from the beginning to the end.